Hey guys, and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we're gonna be looking at five things to consider when designing a property brochure. Now, this really could apply to any brochure, but in this case, we're gonna be looking at a project that we've just done for one of our clients. So let's jump right in and have a look on the computer now. Okay, so on the computer here, you'll see we have our print ready artwork from the brochure that we created for our client. The first thing we are going to be looking at is the cover design. So this is essentially an A3 sheet of paper folded down to A4. So we're looking at the print artwork, which is why this is appearing as a kind of double page spread. However, if I zoom in on our PDF here, really this right hand portion is our front cover. Now we also have a web version of this so this is probably a better way to show you what the front cover consists of. We designed this obviously we are dealing with images that we've been sent as well as the information. So the key thing that we want to draw out here is the name of the property or the address of the property. So opted for a full page edge to edge image that we exterior of the property and to make the text legible we opted to put all of the text on kind of blocks of colour or in this case a block of white. So opted to kind of bleed this off to the left as this draws the eye in nicely. The eye is always going to go to the top left of a page so this is why I opted for this kind of design. The bottom of the cover we've got the reference to the solicitors they're using, so BTO, we've used their brand colours and tried to again bleed this to the bottom so it's consistent in its styling and it's not covering up too much of the image as well. With this image, you know, we wanted to keep things like the door and the of the property clearly visible. So we tried to kind of keep information clear and legible without covering too much of the image up. Here you can see the inner page spread we have here. So essentially this is an A3 sheet that folded down to A4 size. Uh, we are looking at essentially the opened A3 sheet. And it's very important to consider when we're designing like this. We want each page to work well individually as well as they, they will be looking at it in a sort of opened form. So this is a double page spread. We have our inner left page on the left hand side and then our inner right page. Um, this was to create a nice kind of symmetrical design that would work well single pages as well as a double page spread. So you can see we have the double page spread here set up for print. If I go back over to our web ready PDF and you can see this is set up as individual pages. These two pages still work well even without being side by side. So it's, it's really important to consider. We can be a little bit more free when we're working across two pages with a double page spread. You can have elements kind of bleeding over into the right hand or left hand pages. Uh, we have actually kept a bit of a divide between them, but it's still working in a way that I can sort of page to page. So I think to consider when we are designing. The thing we've done is split the page up into two columns. So we've been working with kind of grids here. Another very important thing when we are doing any kind of print design, you all want to work to some kind of grid or guide to keep things consistent. So we'll just jump over into our InDesign file for this. This is our inner page spread here in our preview mode, similar to what we were just looking at in our PDF. Guides and things on, you can see we have some magenta lines running down the middle of the page. So this shows that we have our two column grid here and we've kind of aligned all of our elements up using this grid where possible. It's important that we've done this on both of these pages because the user will be looking at both of them at the same time. We want the kind of flow and symmetry of the pages to work with each other. It wouldn't have worked nearly as well if we had a two page layout on the left inner page and then switched to a three column on the right hand side. I think that it wouldn't work at all but this is just for a bit more symmetry in this situation. To note is the kind of page hierarchy we have here and kind of events we want to draw our user's attention to first. So we were obviously supplied the content for this brochure and one of the key elements is this opening paragraph of text. So to really stand out we've opted to put it on the kind of brand red colour we have here 
and then we have it bleeding in from the left hand side the eye is again drawn to the left hand side first it's sitting kind of lapping the key hero image as well the idea is that we draw the user's attention into this paragraph of text first and then we have these two big hero images now we have some other design options every time we do a design we create multiple options and we did have some more with smaller images but again this is one where you don't have a lot of time to kind of grab your user something like a, a property or a house is a very visual thing so we opted to choose the two strongest images in terms of composition and just what was in the image so we're not picking something like a room for this kind of thing because it's not quite as appealing show you one of our other designs here it's not necessarily that there's anything wrong with the design of this, but it's that the elements aren't working in a way that it's going to be appealing to the user. So we really need to think about the bits of what we're designing. Is up here all just a little bit too small? We just kind of thin image, but it's not really giving much away to the user. So this op sort of fell short. I think when we presented this to the client, they weren't as keen on this. And we can absolutely understand why. Back to our other one, again, we do have some smaller images down at the bottom left hand side of the page, but these still work, you know, we still do a good cross section of images in general, but it's good to have a bit of a hierarchy and kind of make certain elements bigger than others, depending on what we want to draw attention to. When pick of images, we were sent these images, they were taken by an external source and we were noticed that they were just quite dull and quite dark looking. So we upon ourselves just to kind of retouch these and brighten them up a bit. Over into Photoshop, I've got an example here whereby we turn off our layer we've applied to kind of S. This is kind of what we were originally supplied and it's just a little bit dark and dingy. Like because these are being used to really sell the property and sell the space, it's important that they look right in the first place. When when the user is looking at them, something like a room looking too dark can be can be quite off-putting. So this is where we just applied a little bit of correction. I did that with a lot of these and as well as sort of converting them for print use as well. Speaking of setting this up for print, our final point is exporting. So. When we are creating a document for print, in this we were working with a 3mm bleed and I did mention you know we have a lot of L that are bleeding off the edge of the page so this is an important aspect of print. We have our bleed line around the edge of our artwork that is our bleed line and you can see here we've made sure we've gone through and any element or colour graphic that's going to the edge we are extending that into the bleed area. So this means when it gets cut down, we're not going to have any kind of white space um, outside of the image graphics that shouldn't be there. The thing we do when we export for print is use something called pre-flight in InDesign. So I already have mine set up. You can see if I click it here, we actually have a print profile set up. So what this is doing is scanning our document and flagging up any potential issues for print. So for example, if there's any image that are set in the RGB color space, it would flag this up as we need this to be CMYK for print. Things like overset text. So for example, if I grab a text box here, this to be too small, we now have overset text. You can see over my pre-flight, this is now flagging this up. I can actually double click on this and it will take me to the element in question and drag this back down and you can see that fixes the problem. The really important again when we are create any kind of artwork for print you need to make sure that everything is set up and proofed properly before you send it off. What we had to do is because this is to sell a property this is also to feature on a website so Almost we were designing this for print, but we also created a web version. So for that, all we had to do was export it in a different way. So when we go up to file and export, you can see we get a few options in our drop down here. So when we were making this for print, we were using the print preset here. But for web, we actually used an interactive PDF and that just gives us some more options for optimizing this for web use. This one is the web optimized version. 
Uh, the other thing we had to make sure we did, we obviously set up our images for print previously, so we made sure they were CMYK and 300 DPI resolution. However, web it is a slightly different way of doing things, so we need to make sure the images are actually RGB and should really be no larger than 72 DPI resolution. So changes there it just meant we had to take those images and create copies of them and we uh, edited them to be ready for web. From there we were able to export that easily so it's not a huge amount of work to be able to convert this for web use as well and now they have matching documents one set up for print and one for web use so hopefully you found those five tips helpful if you have any of your own tips or things that you adhere to when you're creating a design like this do let us know in the comments down below as we'd love to hear what you think remember to like the video hit subscribe for more weekly content and check out the link in our description for lots of other graphic design tips and content see you next time